Jack and Jill here. Hi. Welcome to the Jack Jill Show, entertaining real estate investment talk. I'm Jack Butella. And I am Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about telling stories in your land posting. It's really actually how you sell real estate, this subcategory or sub asset of real estate anyway. Mm -hmm. Paint a beautiful picture. If you, as the storyteller, or as the lister or the seller of your own land, really question whether or not at the end of your posting, boy, this sounds so good. I really wonder if I should sell this thing. Then you're doing your job. I think it starts even when you buy it. You know, when you're looking at the asset and you're deciding whether or not to purchase it, or if you don't do this, you should be doing this. Do you ever like really decide you're going to sell a car and you get it all cleaned up and it's like, man, I should keep this. Right. That's the feeling you're right. looking for. Right. So you're already starting. When you're buying the property, you should already be thinking about what the end use is. Right. And that's how you're going to paint the picture of the story because you're going to know that, you know, wow, this is an interesting acquisition. This would be great for some of the people that I've talked to that love to hunt and find deer. You know, kind of thing. You Perfect. know that, so you're already you're already thinking about how you're going to tell that story and post the property for sale right. and get other people excited. Before we get into the details, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the JackJill.com online community. It's free. Cool. All right, Matt asks. I was recently scratching my head as to the low turnout of a recent mailer. I closed on two properties out of 800 mailers. Hold on a second. <laughs> you know. How is this a low turnout? Huh. So 800 mailers, by my calculation, costs about 300 bucks to send out mm-hmm. from start to finish. And you bought two properties? Let's let's read on. Mm-hmm. I offered $4,000 in an area where market value was somewhere around $18,000. So I should have presumably been able to get 0.5 to 1%, I would think, which is four to eight properties. I'm selling one of the lots now, and the buyer actually owns another lot in the subdivision, and she mentioned, I've received two letters and a postcard in the last year or so. Sure enough, this, sure enough, one was mine. Ha, ha, ha. That's funny. So clearly, someone beat me to it, which is fine. I still will pick up a few lots and move on with my life. Now, I'm curious if anyone has a trick to check the sold comps to see if one name or LLC has made multiple purchases in the past year or two. I presume that the lots won't still be in their name. If they're any good, they will have sold them by now, but picked off the motivated sellers in the process. Does anyone screen this kind of thing or just price your mailer and move to the next mailer? Do you, can you would you like to answer this first? Okay. I'm gonna cool. I'm gonna sit over here and cool off. Why? 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 Because this is so backwards. And this person, you know, how a lot of times we say, "Man, I'll tell you, this person is really gonna do great in this business." I can tell by the question you're asking. You're early on. It's gonna. You're gonna do fantastic nine times out of ten. This is the diametric opposite. Just reading too much into it. Go ahead. I mean, you can answer first. No, I want. I'm gonna I, cool off. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. For number one. All right. If you buy, if you're buying things for fourteen thousand, and you can sell them for. Okay. Say the market value is eighteen thousand. So you're buying for four thousand. You double your money for eight. You're still ten thousand dollars under market value. Hmm. Sounds like a home run to me. So number two. Maybe you could even buy some for six thousand dollars and send them for twelve. Hmm, you're still way under market value. Again, sounds like a home run to me. So I don't understand. And then the other thing is, I do, I do, I think I know this is why you're making me, why you're getting mad. Just because someone else sent something out there doesn't mean it's bad or we don't use that area or whatever. The situation is a situation at that time. They could have had three letters, filed them all, like in the trash, last year. And guess what? All of a sudden now, uh, something happened. Um, they they retired. Uh, they're, you know, whatever it is, their situation changes, and they're really, now they're ready to go, and your letter shows up. That's it. You're reading too much into this. Is that what you're saying, Jack? Let's take it apart. Okay. He sent out 800 mailers. What we say all through the program is... Do not send out a small amount of mail. You're going to be disappointed. Don't dip your toe in the water. Jump in. Double that would have been more appropriate. 1,500 is the bare minimum. And here's why. We all know statistical samples, the larger that they are, the more accurate they are. 
True. If you have the means, send out 4,000 to 10,000. That's what we do. Mm-hmm. And that's how we achieve the half to 1%. With houses, it's even, we're, we are experiencing a house closure rate like I have never experienced before from a yield and a mailer. And it's because we're, t- we're pricing it right. Mm-hmm. Number two, and I can't express this enough, Repetition in advertising or marketing is sure. the key. So this notion that somebody got there first, somebody got to a county first and they sent one mailer out to all the five acre property owners. And so it's over and wrecked for the rest of us is ludicrous. Hilarious. Yep. If you've ever watched a football game or any kind of sporting event, and there's a Pepsi commercial in the beginning and then there's one four minutes later and then eight, and then 16. You've seen the same Pepsi commercial 18 times in one three or four hour period. You're, you know, you're really seriously thinking about drinking a Pepsi as repetition works. So Mm -hmm. all the things that we've spent a lot of, almost 700 shows talking about doing are diametrically opposite in this question. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that irks Jill, and for whatever reason, she's in a good mood today, so I'll I'll take the brunt of it. Oh, what, what, (laughs) tell me. Is complaining about oh, closing on two properties. True, I know. When he buy it, send eight hundred mailers out. I didn't block two pieces of real estate. I know. Come on. And oh, you're upset about it. Exactly. Darn it! I only double my money, and I, I, you know, at the end of the day, this person probably invested three, four hundred dollars, and they only made ten thousand dollars. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's the, at the end. It says he says. Guess that was a fail. <laughs> no, I'm curious if anyone has a trick. Yeah, to, ch- to check sold comps. Okay. And see if someone's buying them all up. Sold comps for this asset type are, don't exist. Right. We pr- the f- we've made a whole career out of pricing uh, mailers to LLCs and, and anyone else. Right. Based on current property that's available. You want to be way lower. Okay. So, you know, maybe I'm out of line here, but no, we've you're... just, we've addressed these things. I, I don't understand how much more clear we have to be about it. No. So the last question, what he said is, does anyone screen this kind of thing or just price your mailer and move on to the next mailer? Yep. That's what we do. That's what everybody in our group does who's successful. Yep. You just plow the industry. Well, you know what it is? It's like you can't get emotional. This is sounding to me like getting a little too emotional, a little too like, oh, I did it all wrong. I guess I should just give up. You no. nailed it. Thank you. You nailed it, Joe. Don't get emotional. Don't give up. Just keep move on. And by the way, and Jack's right. If you, if you spend time trying to do whatever little nitpicky like, oh, someone, whatever. I mean, what, that's a huge waste of time and energy and money. Move on. It's fine. Yep. So... It's okay. There's enough property to go around. And like Jack said, more than one letter never slowed us down. He mentioned a half to 1% yield on the mailer. That's what Jill and I get. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit better actually now. So if this is your first mailer and it sounds like it is, you can't expect that. Mm -hmm. Jack, you'll get better. You will get better. Stay with it. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. If you continue this down this path, you won't. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Jack. (laughs) Can we get to the meat of the show? (laughs) Today's topic, telling stories in land postings. This is the meat of the show and why it's so important. So what I've I've recently been going through with our excellent staff, by the way, how to post and kind of refresh how we sell property and how we present it online. And one of the things that I, I say is, and there's it's kind of a two points to all this. Number one, break a posting down into separate parts, right? So the reason that you write a, re, would re, the reason that you write a title in a land posting is to get to get someone to take the next step, which is click, click from the actual picture or the thumbnail, read the title, and say, oh, this is interesting. Click on it. Step one, and then. There should be what I call a hook immediately, right below the the beautiful picture and the title that says, your 40 acre ranch is now available. That's a good title. Your Arizona 40 acre ranch is now available, just made available in a beautiful picture. And then, so great, I'm gonna click on it. Now I see the hook. The uses of this property are only limited to your imagination or 
live off the grid mortgage free or invest short term to long term in a piece of real estate some type of intriguing thing like and you start to go down this path where you see yourself in the land auto manufacturers have been and advertisers have been doing this forever where you have to start to see yourself inside that car or you see somebody that looks like you or maybe a younger version of you or whatever intrigues you to say you know what man i i would love i would look good in that car or i do need a car anyway and you start to tell yourself man this is an interesting situation i i really don't like the mortgage situation i'm in the kids are out of the house it'd be great to have 40 acres in northern arizona build up a tiny house or you, you get the, you start that thought process that's what these land postings are about so so many times i see and i am and the reason we're doing this topic is because uh we're going through it right now in our office because we've had kind of a shift change and uh we're, i'm going through explaining this and it's actually kind of fun it's interesting to see what people come up with a fresh set of eyes that are not industry specific is always really interesting May I ask a question? Absolutely. How do you feel about including like the area? I, I called it area niceties because I don't know how else to describe it. Like, where do you see or what value do you place in the posting where you share, hey, you know, and, and when you need to go get groceries, here's where you go. And when you need to get mail, here's where you go or you need to do this. How important is that? I think that I, I kind of take the keyhole approach where you start wide and then you get real narrow, like an old school skeleton keyhole. And then you come back out wide. So you talk about this big picture concept of having living the cowboy dream. And then you do exactly what you said. You bring it down more narrow. Here's what's going on in the state. Here's what's going on in this little region area, maybe the county. And here's what's ha- here's where you might see yourself getting groceries every day. Okay. So, yeah. And then all through that, you're, you're describing and telling a story about why it would be great to live there. And Remember the place? A beautiful sunset. We had a bunch of properties one time in southern Arizona that was, I did not know until we got into it. This was years ago. That was a huge bird watching community. Do you uh-huh. remember that? Yeah, sure. And I remember it was, I was like, this is very interesting. I was uncovering that and that's who was buying up all the property. Mm-hmm. There was all these people that were, I did not know right. that that is a big community of people that are all into bird watching. Yeah, it was like, it turned out that there was a lake on the property and it was a migration spot between north and south birds and they would spend time there you could there was one only like three places in the world that you could see certain types of birds i do remember so funny i think there was a lot of canadians at the Mm -hmm. time too i'm like maybe they have a lot of birds up there so they're all into it i don't know not that we don't but different birds i don't know i just remember it was interesting it just came to mind this bird watching community (laughs) and people have written uh, dissertations on trying to understand canadian behavior well there you go (laughs) 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 Uh, i'm from michigan so we have a a healthy ribbing of each other totally because we're so close to canada that's right hey some of our best friends are canadian (laughs) (laughs) there we go um that's so funny. The puck doesn't <laughs> fall too far from the goal. Did you just make that up? Yes. <laughs> so, oh, That's outstanding, Joe. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you kind of want to have, you have to want, it's hard to explain, but if you're a land person and you're probably listening to this, I'm a born land person. I just love land and I love that whole notion of having a, a quiet place where you can, I don't know, bang out a novel or whatever it ends up being, that little land fantasy you have. Maybe for a lot of people, it's just to be completely debt free and in, in, out and in where there's fresh air. You have to tell that story and your, your posting needs to convey uh, that type of possibility. That's really what I'm saying is possibility. Why is this hard for people to understand well I've come to I, I've asked myself that and I think the real answer is that they they just aren't um, innately land people hmm so do you would you think that they could do it in a house versus land like if they no. s- oh maybe they can't really convey anything okay like they can't walk into a room and s- whether it's a describing piece of land or uh putting furniture in a living room they can't walk in and see how the layout's going to be i'll ask can i ask you a couple questions sure. and i think it'll be real clear okay when you walk into an open house that's an older house not a new one mm-hmm. what do you do what, what's the first thing that comes to your in your mind move walls <laughs> what you look at what's possible yeah you don't look at what's there no 
you look at, oh man, in two weeks I can have this thing where it needs to be. Because usually it's an older home, it's smaller rooms, and my, my mind goes to exactly what's possible, right? I'm with you. I just learned recently that this is the absolute opposite of what most people do. That's what they do is they, they, they move in, or they walk in the door, and they say, where's my couch going to go? Uh, where would we put the bed in this room? You're right. Or you know what? You know what? I know you're right. Cause I, and we all watch those home shows. And it's so funny because, you, you know, they walk in and go, oh, I hate yellow. Let's leave. And, I, and my thing is, oh, because we can't change paint. Right. And they don't. But they, they really, in their head, they don't see it. And they, and they don't, even the outside of the house, it's very sad. You could probably, I mean, that would be a good thing people should do. Maybe before you even stage the house, you really should look at the outside of the house and just spend, if you have only have so much money, spend it on that. Get them in the door at least, you know? I just watched a, it wasn't on HGTV, but it was a contest. Um, they, they, three groups of people were given a certain amount of money in a Canadian market, to buy a house, they're given six months to renovate their houses and the person who they and they had an accountant like reviewing every single dollar I know though did you see this I, you know what's funny I've seen a British version of it and so at the end of the thing whoever wins makes the most money they get an extra $50,000 from the sh- yep. from the show producer maybe it's, I've seen this it's the same show I think so it's, one group was a married couple yeah it was their first flip yeah one group was two brothers who've done a bunch of deals mm-hmm. in that market and the other one was two stepsisters one was didn't live in town mm-hmm. and the, what caught me about the show the two uh, I'll tell you I'll, I'll spoil the whole thing it, but the two experienced uh, guys won. Mm-hmm. They won the money. They were by leaps and bounds. They made like a hundred thousand dollars more on the house than the other two. Right. The two stepsisters didn't touch the outside of that house. In fact, on the open house of the, the open house, the day of the opening house to sell the property after it was renovated, they were outside sweeping up leaves and stuff. Wow. So for some As re- an afterthought. And I just think that sometimes for whatever reason, and I'm not stereotyping, but women tend to really concentrate on the inside of the house and just forget about the outside. Oh, yeah, no. So. <laughs> no, no, you gotta have, yeah. The guy, the two guys, um, they just really, curb appeal was their whole point. Right. They, they went in and they, they got down to the studs on the inside, put in pretty, it was reasonably nice mm-hmm. on the inside, but they didn't pull the stops out. Did they stage them? Yeah, they were all staged. Okay. All three. So that's what you're doing. It's like in these property descriptions and you're telling a story, you kind of, you have to, you're kind of describing how it looks staged, you know, and, you know, imagine, um, imagine drinking your coffee from the porch with this view. Yep. That's what you're trying to convey. With the steamy thing of coffee and it's kind of a little bit nippy outside and it's beautiful. Exactly. Exactly. And quiet. It's like that, it's like that house that, um... One of the ones that we did where, I mean, this is my thing anyway, not just one, but when we were doing um, house flips all the way through and we were moving walls and doing all that stuff, um, I always made sure that I had fresh flowers in the house Mm -hmm. every time any would come. And I would, so I had on a schedule, it was just me doing it back then too, literally had a schedule on my phone that every four days or so I would go get fresh flowers and swap them out. And made sure, because I, and by the way, back then too, we had help selling the house, but I couldn't count on the help. So I was doing it. That, ex- that specific house, I uh, recall, Jill, you are an expert at presentation. I mean, I multiple I times when we were done with that house, you. I'm like, you know what? If this is in a different neighborhood, I would move in. Yeah. I'm like, I was, I walked around that house at the end and I'm like, man, man, we did a good job. Yep. For not a lot of money. And we did it in less than 45 days. These people get six months to do it mm-hmm. on TV. So if you're sitting around saying, wow, this property's great. Maybe I should keep it for the kids. Maybe I shouldn't. Then you did a good job in the posting. That's, That's my whole point. Perfect. Join us tomorrow where we discuss, would you want to buy it? I love it. Hey, Carry, carrying along the theme of uh, how to post property on the internet. Perfect. And we answer your question, should you have one, post it on our online community found on jackjill.com. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Wow. Was that a rant for me? Totally. <laughs> are you a little frustrated? Could you keep describing this over and over and over again? You know what? I thought we were past, uh, right when we started Land Academy, there were several times where I just said, I'm, I'm over this. I'm over trying to explain why I, I, we don't need this. I'm over explaining why sending out direct mail in an offer format like we have been doing for years and years 
uh, why it works. Yeah. You know, so I've, we haven't questioned like this in a really long time where it's got that that tint of sarcasm slash, oh, yeah, you guys, it's, you, it doesn't really, what you say is really not that accurate. I don't, I don't do well with that. No. Because we don't need to do this. Right. Well, you know, I, I, uh, I, we're here to save you. And you either get it or you don't. You either get it or you and don't. And I'm not going to, And you know what, there's so many people that really want our help and they do get it and they are learning and they are doing some awesome transactions and we're just going to focus on those folks. Well said, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, share the fun by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you're listening. And while you're at it, please rate us there. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. Mm-hmm.